Here are some tips to overcome some of the hurdles and blunders that we've seen commonly happen as teachers flip their classrooms. Make sure your students can access the content. We all know that not all students have access to the internet at their home, so you may have to come up with some other solutions. Get some flash drives, check them out to students, burn the video content onto DVDs, or write a grant, get a class set of uh, some sort of digital device that you can check out to your students and they can take home and use that way. Make sure you teach your students how to watch a video. You say, my kids know how to watch a video. Yes, they know how to watch Spider-Man, but that's not the same as watching an educational video that you've created for them to watch. Ultimately, you're trying to teach them how to interact with the video content in a meaningful way that causes them to reflect and think through what they're being exposed to. I had a conversation with a sixth grade teacher and he said, I spent three weeks teaching my students how to watch a video. He had, you know, little guys, you know, 12 year olds. I had 16 year olds. It makes a huge difference uh, based on the maturity of the kids and, and what they are ready and prepared to learn. Keep in mind that the length of the videos does matter. Our rule of thumb is one to one and a half minutes per grade level that the students are in. So a fourth grade student, you're talking four to six minutes max. A 10th grade student, 10 to 15 maximum. Keep it short, and if you need to make more videos that are short, that's better than making fewer videos that are long. Another question that a lot of teachers ask is, what do I do if students show up to my class and they haven't viewed the content? Well, let's be real here. I mean, there are kids who are gonna show up to any classroom who haven't done their homework. That's just a reality that we live in as educators. It's really not that different in a flipped classroom, but there are ways that, that you can uh, safeguard or build in some steps to keep kids engaged while they're viewing the content and that you can use to check to see if they have. We took the low-tech approach. We just wanted to see some notes. Other teachers are embedding these videos on a web page and embedding uh, like a Google form underneath it to collect some data from the students, having them answer some questions. You could just pose a question in the video themselves and have the students bring the answer to that question as an entrance ticket into class. So there's all sorts of different ways that you can check to see if students actually did their work and then you as a teacher, as an educator, will just hold them accountable for that. Ultimately, I think the key is that you hold kids accountable. If they've made the poor choice of not doing the work, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that time and you're gonna say, you now have to watch the video in class while the other kids are getting help on the hard stuff. So some teachers get a little intimidated by this idea of creating their own videos. Really, you don't need a super duper studio. You don't need to worry about high dollar cameras and things like that. But there are a few techniques that you can do to really improve the quality of your stuff. So sit in a room with good lights, have a nice quiet area to work, and don't have a distracting background. Have it something nice and simple. Those are things that you can introduce to help the quality. Another question you should ask yourself is, do I need it to be perfect or do I need it on Tuesday? So some teachers can get bogged down and trying to have everything just, just, just perfect, but how many of your actual live lessons in a classroom have been perfect? Probably not very many. We, we teach naturally, we teach organically, and we speak to our students in a way that's meaningful to them. Make these videos the same way. Just make them effective content delivery tools. Don't worry about trying to make a Hollywood production out of it. One of the beauties of the flip class is it's very scalable. You know what? You don't have to flip a class. You could flip one lesson, or you could flip a unit, or you could flip a whole class. It's scalable. So, so one recommendation we would have for you is maybe you need to start small and figure out what's the best place to flip. If I were to give you a recommendation of what you should flip if you're looking for a lesson, find something that your kids struggle with. I was working with a group of fourth grade teachers and we were talking about math and they said, in unison to me, they said, my kids struggle with long division. I said, that's your first flip class video is long division. So what's the equivalent of long division for you? That's your first lesson to flip. So to recap, make sure all of your students have access to the content. Make sure you teach them how to watch the videos. Build on some safeguards to make sure that all students are actually watching the videos. Don't feel the need to make your videos perfect. And don't try to do too much all at once. Take it step by step, take it slow, and before long, you'll have flipped your class.